for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Welcome back, everyone, to episode 108 of the Pleb Underground Weekly Show. And joining me today, I've got very special guest, longtime friend to the show. I've got Rick, Rick from the HR department at Crypto Cloaks. Rick, thank you very much for joining me on the Pleb Underground. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I'm fucking Jack to be here. So before we dive into it, what's uh, what's it like in HR at uh, at Crypto Cloaks? Uh, it's a hell of a deal. Uh, you have to deal with a lot of angry employees, specifically myself. Uh, it's hard to go into details because confidentiality as HR and head of it. I can't really talk about too much, but it's a roller coaster, man. HR is always fun. You get a lot of resumes? Uh, tons of resumes. Tons yeah, of resumes. usually for myself, just trying to hire myself. <laughs> just trying to hire yourself to... Uh, that's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. Okay. Okay, guys, we are going to run right into it. We're diving into the numbers. And the numbers, of course, are brought to you by Time Chain Stats and Time Chain Calendar. The Pleb Underground is brought to you by Thunder Funder. Check it out. Thunderfunder.com. Thunder Funder is a funding portal registered with the SEC and a member of FINRA. Their mission is to provide retail investors access to investments while supporting the growth of open source projects. They love Bitcoin. Check out their shit coins. That's Thunder Funder. Com. At the time of this recording, the block height is 867,326. The Bitcoin fiat exchange, 67,788, 85. Yeah, we're bouncing around 80. Okay, if I keep talking, we're going to keep going lower. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Big Max, the BTC, look at us. One th uh, sorry, <laughs> 13,160. Uh, total public lightning capacity, 5,261. Fastest fee, 12 sats per V-byte. Moscow time, 1475. And in the same vein as that little mcdonald's stat that we have there right the big max per check this out we have something very special for the numbers this is a total it, it probably should be in hopium but since it's, it's just you and i today rick uh yeah. you know we're gonna do we're gonna do the numbers and we're gonna do the fireside chat but so i figured we should show this here the mcrib <laughs> is back no no hear, hear him out hear him out BTC historically, this is uh, intern brought, BTC historically goes up about 2x, well, less than 2x after the McRib, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> greater than 2x after the McRib returns. Don't fade the McRib, not oh. financial advice. <laughs> so. My favorite is chart boys and always finding something to compare to, and now it's the McRib. What are your thoughts? I uh, I never thought of the I mean like the McRib indicator, huh? I uh... well, it's almost like I kind of want to go and look at when uh, uh, what's her name does the hall or the Christmas song. We should bring that to the relativity of Bitcoin price. What's the one? Um, what's do you know what I'm talking about? They're so wait, which are you talking about? Mariah Carey? Yes, Mariah Carey. Yeah, of course, Jesus, of course. It's of like it. that's like the most famous Christmas yeah. song person. You know, and I'm sure somebody's <laughs> going to comment somebody that. else from like the boomers, huh? Probably. But yeah, but we should look at the comparison between that and Bitcoin price. I mean, I, I think we could draw any conclusion like this and it's fantastic because then we could just brand ourselves as like plan. I think we're up to plan D. So I think we'll just we could be plan E. Hell yeah, man. Right. Based on Mariah Carey. We're going to win. Yeah. Mariah Carey and the McRib. We'll. And we'll add rainbows and we'll make it. Yeah, it'll be cool. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be really cool. All right. Oh, man. Yeah. It's going to be that kind of episode, Rick. Um, I love it. All right, guys. So right before we started recording this episode, there was this drop at the, uh, what is it, the Lugano Plan B uh, conference, right, about the, uh, the latest Satoshi statue to drop. Now, this tweet from Nopara. Which is your favorite Satoshi statue? So as somebody already pointed out in the comments, the middle one is not a Satoshi statue at all. So there really are only two quote unquote official unofficial Satoshi statues. And this middle one is a not Satoshi statue, but as Nopara pointed out, 
in some sense, that's more of a Satoshi statue than the others. Um, okay, so barring this middle Satoshi statue, we saw some uh, we saw some some pretty uh, some pretty negative comments on on Twitter um, about the Satoshi statues. I, I know that uh, Mandrick pointed out you know the the idea that you know the quote unquote you know shouldn't have any idols so to speak, right? Um, so it's kind of a mixed bag, right? Uh, because I do remember when the other Satoshi statue came out, the the, the first one there, the bust. People were really, I don't know. I, they were jacked, I, man. Right? That's what's so wild to me is I just don't, I'm I'm trying to figure out what's happening on Twitter. And I think the problem is like we're in this like spiral of everybody being negative. I feel yes. like. Yes. Like back in the, back in like 2020 was I think like the golden years of Bitcoin Twitter from like 2018 to 2020. Everybody was just like living on not even hopium, just like this crazy happy energy that they found Bitcoin. And I think now that we've all been here for so long, it's kind of just hitting this point of like, oh, it's the same stuff over and over again. And now, I don't know, I think the mentality is changing, which is, I don't know what it's like on Noster, but I, maybe it's more positive on Noster, but I've definitely noticed on like Bitcoin Twitter, it's a lot of negative. People hate being happy. Yeah. I don't yeah. Right. And, and, and I mean, look, I, I'm sure that some people, you know, the people who follow maybe you or me, like I'll also may even interpret some of, some of our tweets as extremely negative. I was going to say, um, I get caught up in it every now and then I'm not, a, right? I'm not a saint in any way, but I try, I really try to start being positive. Cause I've just seen over the years, it's starting to get so negative again. That's wild. <laughs> It, it really is. And, and it's kind of like that pendulum sway, right? Where it's like you, you've got you, you've got this time where it seemed like everything was overly optimistic to the point where it was just insane. I'd rather and, take that. Right. <laughs> it, <laughs> I would, man. So like, it's I interesting because the negativity gets really bad. Like it's it, it's weird, right? It's like when it's good, it could be even better. But when yeah. it's bad, it's bad enough. It's just a brain drain. It's like, okay, more negative comments. Yeah. Is anybody saying anything good? I want to feel good. So I like reading good comments and like fun stories and shit. It's like Bitcoin Twitter and the news is somewhat turning into what like mainstream media news is where it's always like the bad shit. I want all the happy and good things that Bitcoin's done. Like that's, that's what I'm here for now. Like it's, we won. Everybody's like the battle's still going, obviously, but I, I think we've already won. There's no need to be mad. That's funny because I, I literally just put out a, a clip that that specifically was like, then they fight you. And we're going to be doing a live episode that we're still in the <laughs> then they fight you stage. And this has to do with the ECB stuff, right? That, that That's oh, coming yeah. out. We're not going to discuss that in great detail here. But, you know, like the, the fact that they're demonizing Bitcoin, essentially trying to imply that um, people early to Bitcoin are somehow making non-Bitcoiners poorer. It's like, no, no, no. Bitcoin is not what's making you poorer, okay? The infinite money printing is what's making you poorer. The the drunken man dance between the Federal Reserve and the Treasury Department are making us all poorer. Yeah, that's not wild Bitcoin. that they're trying to blame Bitcoiners. Yeah, it's, like, it's, uh, it's, it's no. our fault. <laughs> it's the money printer. It's your inflation. It's not it has nothing to do with Bitcoin at all. No. So so that's why I yeah. So going back to your point, like we're still. We're, we're still, still fighting. I, I we're in the then they fight you stage, but I do also agree with you. Yeah, this is part of the the duality of man, right? right? I also agree with you in saying that, yeah, I believe we have one. We are in the it's gonna sound corny. It's like, it's like a Charlie Sheen reference. Like we're in the winning stage. <laughs> winning. Oh god. Winning. Winning. Okay. Let's. Uh, speaking of winning. Speaking of winning, I want to get yeah. your thoughts on the uh, the Microsoft news, which is obviously uh, making the uh, the Bitcoin Hopium cheerleaders very happy. It gives something new because let's face it, Michael Saylor is like, I mean, like you know, there's there's not. I much mean, we might as well be we happy. We can't get right? excited about him anymore. No, you know? I mean Saylor's so. old news. That's right. We need new news, right? Now, now we need now we need evil Bill Gates, you know, who's manipulating the mosquitoes to uh, to start. Uh, well, even though I he's not really the CEO anymore. But. That that's what worries me. If Bill, I hate being watching Bill Gates make more money, so it's like a double edged sword. But yeah, I mean, it's cool that Microsoft. Hopefully, they do it. I just want their share because it's a shareholder vote, right? Yeah, he can. Yeah. I'm going to pull some stuff up, uh, but 
ironically, Bill Gates, in the time that he takes a piss, he makes more money than I make in a year. So just kind of putting that out. I mean, he probably makes more than I made in a decade. All of us make in like freaking a <laughs> it's, minute. That's ridiculous. It's nuts. All right. All right. Enough with the coping about Bill Gates' wealth. Here we go. Let's do it. Hey, someday we'll be like Bill Gates, man. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I just, you know what it is, right? If you don't aspire to it, you're definitely not going to earn it. And the truth of the matter is, is that I don't actually aspire to that. I know it sounds corny. People are like, what I do don't you want mean? a billion dollars. I want like a yeah. couple million. I don't need a billion. Exactly. See? Yeah. Reasonable expectations, right? Yeah. Just just some millions? Just, just with, some. With the purchasing power. With the purchasing yeah. power not being eroded. Just some millions and the purchasing power not being eroded. Dude, I just need family, some land, and a little bit of Bitcoin. That's all I need. See? That's it. Simple pleasures, right? Exactly. Exactly. All right. Let's dive into it. Here we go. So everybody saw the news, right? Microsoft will ask shareholders to vote on whether to assess Bitcoin as a corporate treasury asset, and the board recommends a no vote. They should kick so, the entire board out immediately. I'm just saying. Right? That should be the vote. So we've got this tweet over here from uh, Nate Garachi. I probably just destroyed his last name. I do apologize. I don't know if that C is a CH pronouncement or just an S. Anyway, it doesn't matter. All right. So he's going to go out on a limb and predict Microsoft's largest shareholder, Vanguard, will be voting no on adding BTC to the balance sheet. Okay. Oh, Vanguard's the largest shareholder? Yeah. I mean, they so, hate Bitcoin. Uh, yeah. Here we go. The top institutional holders, guys, of Mr. Softy over here. That's right. For those of us who grew up with Microsoft stock, we we lovingly call it Mr. Softy. Um, I've never heard that. No. In my entire life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I come from I come from trad fibro. I'm an amateur that's, trad fibro. So that's, that's so freaking that, funny. That's the nickname, Mr. Softy. Um, but anyways, <laughs> so take a look, guys. Vanguard. OK, Vanguard holds about 9%, right? You got BlackRock. We know BlackRock's take on Bitcoin, right? Larry Fink is a happy cheerleader these days. So you need to make up 1.5% to cancel out Vanguard. And But take a look. JP Morgan is also a shareholder. And so is Morgan Stanley. Now, I honestly do not know the sentiment uh, or the public sentiment of these institutions, towards Bitcoin necessarily, but we do know JP Morgan's, we are aware of Vanguard's, and we are aware of BlackRock's um, public statements. So uh, the other thing is this, right? Um, if I'm not mistaken, and people could fact check this, uh, it takes, you, you have to be a holder of at least 2,000 Microsoft shares to, to make a proposal, um, to be able to have a proposal that can uh, essentially, if it gains enough momentum, will be put in front of the board. Um, okay, fair enough. Now, the board recommends no. So if you've ever actually purchased shares in a company for any length of time and, and having to gone through the quarterly results uh, or a voting process, like you get a digital, oftentimes you get a, a you know, like a, an email that sends you to this website called proxy vote and, um, they show you all the questions, right? They show you yes or no. And then they show you what the board recommends. OK, and you can choose that. You could just simply choose board, you know, the select all button, you know, just do what the board does. You could do that. OK, or they sometimes make you do it individually. But my whole point is this. How many people do you think that hold Microsoft shares really have taken the time to understand that proposal and are going to go against the board's recommendations? Yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Hey, eh? like I. I want it to, let, let's be honest, you want it to happen in the sense of you want the attention on Bitcoin, right? Because we do, we're Bitcoiners, oh, of yeah. course we want the attention. But the truth is, is that like, I, I just don't see it. We're definitely still early. Yeah. I think it's, I think if more and more companies see what MicroStrategy is doing and like how well, I think eventually it'll become more, more mainstream, but I think we're at least a couple of years out. At least you see Microsoft trying something. At least it's like in front somebody there's trying of them yeah so that's pretty cool to see it's just they're probably really early on the whole actually passing thing yeah to your point and and interestingly enough to that point uh somebody on twitter uh today i, I don't know if the the account was punter jeff possibly i could be wrong yeah. either way uh essentially 
uh, he made the point of everybody who, you know, any Bitcoiner who holds enough shares to be able to make these proposals, right, should do it, even if it's it's just going to get thrown out the window. It's just the matter of putting it out there. Yeah, no, I totally understand that. So, I agree. I can't, right? I can't disagree with that. I can't disagree with that. So, so the Microsoft news, is it really like, is it hopium? Do you think I mean, like, yes. it could be made into hopium? <laughs> <right>? yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's yes. totally hopium. I don't, it's probably not going to pass, but it's still cool news. It's yeah. cool that it's even out there and then companies and shareholders are even voting on it. Like that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm just... I, I got to be honest, I'm not looking forward to the eventual no vote and then the big red candle that will follow. I, I just I, my only hope is that that big yeah. red candle is far off and we have already gone into price discovery territory. <laughs> so, so I mean, I it just becomes a blip. But who's, I who mean, knows? with all the with all the shit that happens now and then Bitcoin's price doesn't even react. I, I could see it not even doing anything. There's been so much good news that it doesn't even pump. There's been so much bad news and it doesn't drop. It just crabs along, man. Just crabs. Do you think people are just tired? Yeah, exactly. That's I think that's where we're at because I just it's hard because when you are in the space for a long time, you just like, okay. Like it's it's normal now. Like you don't I don't know. Cause at first when you first get in, you're like all jacked and like super excited about everything. Mm -hmm. And now it's just like not complacent, but you're like awesome like we have bitcoin we all love it and now it's just like i don't even t think twice about it because i don't have to like do the, what i did in the early days like gambling with shit coins and shit it's just like you buy bitcoin you hold it and you just you know in like 10 years you're going to be better off than where you were now that's right that's exactly right and, and all you're really trying to do is figure out how to minimize your costs while yeah. also keeping your standard of living to a place where you are happy right or you are satisfied yeah. Because Cause the best let's... part, Bitcoin is boring and that's what we want it to be. So like if I'm bored about yeah. Bitcoin, I don't care. Like that's exactly how it should be. I don't need hopium. I don't need bad news ruining charts. Like I, I'm bored and that's perfect. That's what I want. I like that. I like that, Rick. I'm bored <laughs> and it's perfect. I mean, it's true though. Like in the grand scheme of things, we want Bitcoin to be boring. It's true. No, you're absolutely right. And uh, Price will you... go up and it'll be boring. And to your point, right, uh, people will maybe hate this, but, you know, Warren Buffett, right, one of the most boring investors of all time, right? Hey, look, he hates Bitcoin. That's totally fine. But in the TradFi system, he is the most boring mf -er there is. And he's also one of the wealthiest. Yeah, so the best. Maybe boring is pretty good. We want boring. <laughs> we want boring. We don't, I don't need any dopamine hits with Bitcoin. I just want it to be boring and... I know I'll be better off in 10 years. Well said. All right, guys, you heard it here first. Bitcoin is boring, and this is what we want. This is going to wrap up the numbers, and we're going to move it on over to the Fireside Chat. Club Underground is brought to you by our newest sponsor, No Hue. Check them out at nohue.com. That's right, guys. The best Bitcoin builders in the space are coming together under one banner. Look for more people and more companies to be joining. Nohue.com, Proof of Ink, Stack Chain Magazine, BTC Pins, Asanoha Gold, Crypto Cloaks, and BTC Sessions are all ready members. Go check out what's going on at Nohue.com. Pleb Underground is brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out at CypherSafe.io. Guys, you know that I am a pet rock enjoyer, and this is the pet rock for Bitcoiners. That's right, the Bitcoin Relo Triangle, 16 ounces of solid titanium. Check it out at cyphersafe.io and look for new products that are going to be coming out very soon at cyphersafe.io. Welcome back, everyone. Fireside chat. You guys know who my guest is. It's no surprise. We've got Rick from HR from Crypto Cloaks. He was able to take time out of his busy day today from HR, not 3D printing, specifically human resources, to uh, to discuss all things Crypto Cloaks. Now, Rick and I have known each other for seven years, <laughs> something like that. God, ever since the start, man. That would be yeah. 2017, 17. so seven years, almost yeah. eight. So so Rick, I've seen, I've seen him grow up. I've seen his business 
grow. He's he's seen my podcast grow, and it is absolutely awesome to be able to have you back and doing this this one on one. Yeah, man. man. It's this been cool. a long time. <laughs> it's been like at least a year, maybe two. Well, so last time you were here, though, it was it was all three of us. It was with Walton and I. Yeah. And but in terms of just us sitting down and having a chat, it's it's been since fun with Bitcoin. And this is oh one of the God. so it's at least it's at least five years. That's wild. So, yeah, that's pretty crazy. You're one of the first people I interviewed. And of course, why was that? Because I was super fascinated with 3D printing. Uh, I still think it's absolutely cool, but I'm going to tell you it it has beat me. Okay, it took me, <laughs> it fucking, it punched me in the gut, and then it just left me there, and it walked away. And the reason why I say this is because I suck at 3D printing. So, I, I, yeah, I know, I, I suck at putting the card in the slot and hitting the print button and having it print. I, I don't know what it is. I've tried the glue. I've tried all these methods. I'm just awful. So look, Rick, all of this introduction to say, tell us about why you started crypto cloaks yeah man um well this? first of all a lot has changed in seven years even when i started with 3d printing so the 3d printers you were using it's night and day difference from what you can get along the same price lines yeah. it's it's wild and i'm going to keep telling everybody that every bitcoiner should own a 3d printer especially now like the tech is so easy it's now i have to go buy another one and play yes damn it okay so how about this yes. um what which one would you recommend? I had an Ender three once upon yep. a time. I had the Ender three Pro, I think it was, or it was the five Pro. Anyways, the yeah, it was like ninety nine bucks, right? Uh, that one was two fifty. That one oh, was okay, two fifty. Okay. Yeah, it was I the it was the five, the Ender five. But then after that, I got uh the uh, the Prussia, the MK three, I believe it is. God, you couldn't get a Prusa to work. Oh, <laughs> and I built it. Buddy. And I built it myself. And I built it myself. Oh shit! Well, yeah. then you shouldn't shouldn't have been a problem. It, it worked for a while, and then yeah. I moved. I moved, and then I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's because I moved to Florida, but I, I started like three D printing like uh, pew pew frames, and for some reason, I mean, man, if you're in Florida, you gotta watch warping. the humidity. Thank you. I gotta. I was like thinking to myself, I was obsessed. Okay, anyways, doesn't matter. You. Let's go back to why you started <laughs> Crypto Cloaks. Shut yeah, up, we're going to be all over the place, man. We're talking yeah, about 3D print, up, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I started Crypto Cloaks Claire. because I got sick of the corporate <laughs> grind of killing 35,000 turkeys a day and being covered in turkey shit and blood every single oh day God. when I came home. So I slowly built up Crypto Cloaks as a side business for five years and then finally said, peace out uh, after running it. And I've been running it for two and a half, almost three years full time. Isn't your, I felt like your background was in engineering. It is. Yeah. So I used to be an industrial engineer for Genio Turkey. Oh, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So I, I used to be really good at planning layouts and machines to kill turkeys faster and better and more efficient. So you see how Bitcoin fixed this. Bitcoin fixes this. Bitcoin uh, fixes I don't have to do that this. anymore. Now I just chill down here all day and run printers. So it's much better. I don't have to take a shower every time I come home immediately. I, I can appreciate that. I can definitely appreciate that. So so tell me, um, what has been what's been your biggest challenge? Because I've look, I, I've watched you through the years, and I can tell you from the uh, from an outside perspective, right? For yeah. me, it always it always looks like you're growing and doing new things, and things are working. Right. Like yeah. that's I could tell you from my personal perspective, and I'm not just saying that because I've known you for this long. It's because that is <laughs> the outside perception that I have. Like, I'm not just saying that yeah. to, to be nice. So what's been your, your biggest challenge uh, so far? I would say overall, if you don't plan for the bear markets, as we all know, they're coming, you will get wrecked. Um, Bitcoin does help you in those aspects just because Bitcoin's price might be down. But if you still give out a solid product, you will still have business where in other industries, if the economy shit, you're done. Um, battling bear markets was definitely the hardest part for running your own business. When there, there was multiple times throughout the last the seven years where I was like, maybe I finally get uh, an actual shop and just have a, a location separate from the house. But if I would have done that, my overhead would have been through the roof and I wouldn't be here. So I've definitely learned 
play it slow and the long game, just like Bitcoin in general. If you run your Bitcoin business slow, steady, and you do what you want, then you, it'll it'll work out. Just don't get too crazy and try to do stuff where you get overhead over through you because the bear market will destroy you. I, I can't disagree with that. Uh, I can't disagree with that. This is my first bear market not being employed, so to speak. Right. That's like, scary. I, yeah, it, it really it was. I mean, like, you know, you know, you know my story. So so let me ask you this. Um, and it's OK if you don't want to share it. But how many times yeah. did you did you think to yourself, um, I, I'm going to just quit and go back to my job? I mean, there's been tons, man. I think about it all the time because right now, even if I don't, if I don't grow, what my main goal is to get the company to grow so I can have my wife stay at home with the kids, so we don't have to do daycare, all that crap. That's my main mission, and I'm always like, okay, what do I have to do to make that happen? And even in the in the past, there's been multiple times during bear markets. You're like, okay, how how long can I go before we start hitting the point of oh shit, I may have to be an industrial engineer again. Um, I've personally probably just been really lucky that I, the last the last time that I was actually worried it was right before I ever designed the space heaters, and that completely saved my ass. I, I like those space heater cases and sales completely saved me through that entire last bear market. Wow, which is crazy. Like I'm so glad it it paid off, and that was an open source project. So I mean that was that was amazing to see, and that was the last time that I was actually really close to being like. Okay, <laughs> it might be time to get a part-time job to cover or go back full-time. But it's it's the passion that I don't ever want to go back to corporate because I would never fit in. I I resemble I resemble that a lot. I, I can appreciate that. And if you could give like one piece of advice, let's say for you know, like what kind of helps you mentally get through this? And, and there's a reason I'm asking this stuff. It's because yeah. I think of this stuff all the time. Right. Um, look, I, you know, I'm not going to lie, you know, my corporate job, like six figure salary, right. You know, yep. 401k, all that good stuff. It's all the good stuff, man. And sure. Right. All the good stuff. The best part. Yeah. You know, like all the good yeah. stuff. Right. And yep. it's like, and as you know, you know, doing this, this type of work, it's like, that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm getting. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not even close. And I can tell you mentally what what helps me um, is is that I I have to recognize that I'm more satisfied with my life, even though I'm actually making less. I'm actually happier with my day to day life. To. Do you That's feel that? Do you feel that to. way? Yes, absolutely. Because nine to five, you're always what really hit me and finally made me do the turning point of why I didn't want to work corporate was people probably heard this story before, but at Genio, I had the top three. So Hormel does like a best of the best thing where top 16 projects and all of Hormel go. And like you do this prize and it's like this competition. I had three best of the best projects in the top 16. I saved the company over $8 million straight on paper. And that was straight savings. And I got a towel and a coffee mug for saving them $8 million when being in first and third place out of all of it. And that was the point that I go, why in the fuck am I saving other people $8 million and I get a coffee mug and a towel? And I busted my ass after that and quit six months after that and did Crypto Cloaks full time because everything that I put into the company, all the bullshit, all the hard work, I actually see the return of investment. That, that is, ab that's beautiful. And um, to your point, right? Um, I, I remember once uh, we did a big project and um, essentially we were able to s not necessarily save the company a bunch of money, but we yeah. were able to save the the customer for the company that we worked for. We got pizza. Yeah. So, like, you know what I mean? So they, they got so to, they got to renew an $11 million contract and we got pizza. So, yeah, so to your point, right? Like this is, it's like, they should have cut you a fucking check, man. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, even it doesn't matter. Even if it was 10 K, right. Just to, just this, like what, how wouldn't it, let me ask you, would it have been different if they would have cut you a check and been like, here's like 20 K or 25 K or something like that on top of your regular salary, because you killed it for us. Don't get me wrong. I, yeah. That's still not enough, but symbolically, would you have felt more, um, would, would you have appreciation less to, yeah would you have felt more appreciated 
Oh, absolutely. My thing was, if I got 1% of every single dollar that I saved the company, where they would, if they even saved like $7 million or whatever it would be, I get 1% of that. That'd be the biggest motivator ever. But then you have to, then they're like, well, that's not going to our bottom line. It's like, okay, well, thanks for a towel. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> and, and the best part, Rick, that towel is an expense. They get to oh, yeah, that and then shit they, off. Yeah, and they so the little towel, the crap that they give you, it's, oh my God, it, that was a turning point, man. Good for you. Yeah. And and I could just uh, you know what in um I, I could say that to to my you know to to my experience they when we had covid the first thing they did, right? The first thing they did was cut all of our benefits. Everything. Yeah. Right? That was the first thing they did. Then the second thing they did is they made us take furloughs. Okay? Yeah. So unpaid like else. vacations, right? So and then and then after that they gave their quarterly results and it was the most profitable quarter they ever had. Wonder why. And I gave them my two weeks <laughs> that it was, it, it's like, so hold on a second. So you, you ream us all like, and you yeah. expect us to work and then you, you do this. And, and I mean, it's that, easy to it's, show that it's their best quarter when you just cut half your staff. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> it's yeah. This is just so yeah. To your, to your point, right. It, it's sorry. You know, like, that I, I can I can go and be treated like crap all on my own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I it's like I, I don't need to be a part of this company. Like the whole point that you go work for a corporation like this, uh, in my eyes, anyways, in my particular situation, was because hey, you know, like if bad things happen, like you still get to keep your job. And the first thing that happened was they took that away from us. They took away everything they could. Yeah. So it was like, why am I here? I may as well be struggling on my own. Well, I don't think people understand is like when our parents were growing up and our grandparents, those people would stay in a company for like 30, 40 years. They'd Big get difference. pensions and they'd get like, it was, it was worth it to stay at a company, bust your ass because you always saw the benefits. Like my grandpa was retired for like 40 years and lived on a pension. Like that, that's amazing. <laughs> like, that's huge. Like that doesn't happen anymore. So the whole American dream where you can work at a corporate, corporation and like be set i think that's dead because like corporations just literally cut that and yeah. i think that that's the push for entrepreneurs to be like okay i mean i i'll make less money but i'll be happier i i, I work for myself yeah if you run your own company you're working 24 7 365 but i can literally take off whenever i want i can go do whatever i want especially having a kid now if i just want to be like ah lunchtime let's go for a walk during the day i'll be like let's go dude we're gonna, go, we're gonna hop in the stroller. I'm just gonna walk around. Like that is the greatest thing ever, as I'm in control of my time. This is it. This is what people don't realize, right? Like that's what freedom is really about. Yeah, it's to I make be less able money. to control your time. Fuck Who it. Who cares? It doesn't. It. We can't take any of it with us, anyways. Okay, we can't take exactly. any of it, right? You know. So, but um, okay. Back to the uh, back to the crypto cloak stuff. Um, so yeah. so look, I. You guys have grown, right? Because I, if I'm not mistaken, you, you there's also an office, or there's like there, there's printing that goes on in Florida, and there's also at one point didn't wasn't there Europe? Can you can you talk yeah, so about we had, like how you guys what you guys are doing? Yeah, we've been all over the place, man. We've expanded, yeah. we've contracted based on bull markets, bull runs. Uh, so Black Coffee actually used to run our Europe, and then he started working. Oh God, uh, LN Bits, and so he got super busy and couldn't run both. So then he stopped doing Europe, and then I pulled back. And now we're slowly – we found a new guy in Germany, uh, Noel Engineering. He's starting to slowly bring more and more products in Germany and then do everything in Europe. So we're starting to hit that again. But yeah, uh, Mopar Mining, he has been Good dude. working with us for like three years now at least. And he's been running the Florida shop, and I couldn't be happier with that. We have Bruff. That is now our like our IT guy that does all of our website, all that stuff. And now we don't have to get screwed over by Bluehost rug pulling our entire site <laughs> and us having to rebuild everything within like two days to try to like save our ass. Um, so that's glorious. And then we just hired Stuart on to be a sales and biz dev guy and he's doing an amazing job. So it's super fun. Like our, the company that I run, I want to run it like a family. Once you're in crypto cloaks, you're basically family and that's how I treat it. So it's always really it's a slow process of like expanding and building because I always want to know people for a while before they join the team because you are family. Once you're in crypto cloaks, you're, you're in the crypto cloaks family. And for me, that's always been important because in like the corporate world, you're just a number and I never wanted that. 
and I want to always show appreciation to my team and make sure like it is a family kind of thing. Even if we're not technically family, we are family through and through. That's beautiful. And, and that is something that I always, um, I always appreciated about quote unquote mom and pop shops. Yeah. Right. I, I, I do think that that is a virtue, you know, like that's not a vice. Uh, I, I think that that's, that that's a good thing. And I mean, look, it, it's beautiful to, uh, to see you doing it. So, yeah, no, it's fun. So speaking of family, speaking of this stuff, um, so you are part of this no hue. So no hue sponsors the show, right? Uh, yep. Don T. Selly and, and, and his 42 different characters, uh, you know, he, he sponsors the show. And so what exactly I, I've asked this uh, of other guests, too, that I've had on the show, like uh, Asanoha as well. Right. Yep. Uh, he was he was on the show and I asked him about this. So what exactly in your eyes is no hue and what's your affiliation to it? And. If yeah, you can, uh, if you can talk about that. My understanding of no hue is it's <laughs> quite figured be, it out. <laughs> it's supposed to be a one-stop shop for everybody, for like smaller businesses like us, that we can just put our stuff on there. So it's a one-stop shop where you can just click and buy everything and it ships from one location. Um, that's my understanding, but I'm not too sure Don Silly even knows what he's doing because he doesn't know how to reply all, but he's doing a great job. <laughs> Don't worry, Don. We're rooting for you. We know it's not easy. He wears so yeah, many it's hats. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's super insane. Funny. I love giving him shit. Uh, I think I think the idea is great, and it's just going to take some time to build it up and take off. But it's, yeah. it's going to be a one-stop shop is my understanding. Yeah, he described it as like the Amazon for Bitcoiners and also for Bitcoin companies, right? If you want to go and get things made, like if you want to get things printed, it's like all of you guys have all of these different specialties and different products and services so that essentially, you know, like Bitcoiners can go there and then, you know, uh, have contacts to to the yeah, right like person making out. the right product, you yep. know? So it's kind of a, it's interesting. It's It's not a single... It's not like a single marketplace. It's it's dual, you know. Yeah, it's interesting. That's good stuff. All that's right, that's my understanding. Okay, good. That's that's <laughs> kind of my understanding too. I just want to make sure you're the second person that I asked. The stories are aligning. So okay, this is the this wrong. is the narrative. The Amazon for Bitcoin. <laughs> the, uh, that's going to be the uh, the narrative. Um, okay. Speaking of Amazon. Speaking of Amazon. Yeah. Um, uh, you know me, I'm a I'm a giant sucker for for swag and 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 stupid toys, even if they don't make money. Uh, I, I have a a bit axe. Um, yep. I, I noticed that you've been doing a lot of promotion of the bit axes. Um, I'm a huge fan. Obviously, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bash you for uh, for shilling plastic, and uh, for uh, <laughs> you know, I just pla I just scam people for plastic, man. That's what I do. So <laughs> I couldn't was... believe it the first time I ever saw that. Dude, I just scam people for plastic. That's my favorite. <laughs> Uh, you can't, nobody's allowed to sell a product anymore, right? Like if it, it, it doesn't no. matter that people want it, it doesn't matter that people want it. You're just not allowed to sell anything anymore. That's why I just, well, I got sick of the negativity and I'm just like, all right, people do what you want. I don't care. I really don't. And just, it, it's a free market, right? So if the market wants it, buy it. If, if the market's not there, obviously you're not going to sell it. So who really gives a shit in the long run? So how has it been going with the uh, with the bid axes? If if you can give uh, some crazy. insight. It's crazy. No, it's freaking crazy. I the the big thing that people I just want them to understand is the bid axe is a lottery miner, and I don't know if like it has a mis misconception as like this. Oh, I'm gonna hit a block, or I'm gonna. It's more of a learning tool and a lottery miner. If people look at it any different or try to shill it as like this whole mining setup where you're gonna make, get rich and shit, I think that's completely wrong. But I think if you tell people exactly what it is and they understand, then it's cool because it's almost like Bitcoin nodes, but in a small form factor. It, it, it totally reminds me of doing what we used to do like with Bitcoin nodes and uh, with the Raspberry Pi setups. And now you have that kind of in the mining, the home mining space. I think it has its place. Um, I just want to make sure people understand that it, it's a lottery miner. It's nothing more like it's a. It's a hundred and fifty dollar lottery miner, and it's cool. Like if you want to learn mining, like how to get into pool in, like enter your pool info and just see, watch it hash. I think it's a great learning tool to start there and then branch off. Um, but yeah, I I love them. Um, at first, I was definitely very hesitant on like, okay, why are these guys trying to like push it as 
if we sell a whole bunch of them, we can take over and decentralize where I don't, I don't think that's the case because yeah, you'll always have a portion of decentralization with bid axes. And as the tech grows, I think you might have a shot, but you have to think of these big ass, huge corporations that are coming out with miners that are more and more efficient. So no matter how efficient you make yours, they'll do something that drops like 400 Terra hash at like 13 joules and, a corporation will buy it all and the hash rate will go up. So the bid acts will always stay a low percentage. I think it's still now a very important thing that you always keep that small percentage decentralized. Um, that's always a tough call though. Like I, yeah, I don't know where it's going to go. I think it's really cool. I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure if it's just a fad. I think it has merit to decentralize, but I think it has a lot of growing to do to really battle the big corporations and trying to actually get a decent percentage of decentralized hash. Yeah. The, I think the main issue that, that people, I don't know if they, they get this or not, but it, essentially regardless of how many bid axes are online, right. In terms of the decentralization, unless the bit axes are actually finding the blocks more often than the pools and, and people, guys, you know, viewers, listeners, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you know, I like to be held accountable. Uh, I, I believe that if they don't if they don't find a significant number of the blocks, then. The, it, like it doesn't actually impact decentralization, right? Like if it's still always, you know, um, F2 pool and foundry and, you know, marathon and stuff like that, that are or you Mara that are finding the blocks, then, you know, I it's, think it'll matter when the big so, corporations maybe get hit or the big pools or something like that, where yeah, like the government comes after them. And then you have the decentralization when all the other hash goes down, maybe, but, but I don't know. It's a, that, it's always a tough one. It, it, yeah, it's, and that's the whole thing, right? Like that's, that's the, that to me is the challenge. So will these devices, right? Will they ever get efficient enough to compete, right? As a single device. Okay. For example, I also have a, um, Avalon nano. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, from Canaan. Okay. Or Canon yep. or however you want to pronounce it. Okay. That thing pumps out four terahash per second approximately sometimes i get up to like 4.8 okay um i mean in terms of a solo miner just that one alone gives me i think it's like one in 3500 chance i believe per year yeah right so I, i'd be guaranteed a block right once every 3500 years essentially that's a, i'm guaranteed doable. a block <laughs> right doable you know eventually like eventually hit it man but but my point is is that you know like those machines have a long way to go i i just don't you know so yeah. so for me to your point it is a lottery miner it's very important that people understand that um and i think that that alone is pretty much what gives it you know whatever merit it has and i think that for people uh in terms of a learning tool you know like i also that's think where i think it's good. like I think that's where it's, it's shining star is. I think yeah. it's a great uh, learning device where you can tinker with it and learn the very basics of mining. And you can have it in your house. You can, you can have yes. it in your room. It's it doesn't like... take you to rewire like three phase power or 240 yes. plugs and stuff like that. Um, I think it's a great learning tool to understand the basics and see if you really even want to go further than that and go deeper down the rabbit hole. I think it's a good start point. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. It, it really is. And, and I mean, at this point I have, I have a nerd ax, uh, which I believe is fried at this point. Uh, and I have a, a bit ax, which does work. And I have the Avalon nano, right. Yeah. And so essentially between those two devices that actually work, it raises my chances to like one in between, like, let's say one in 2000 to like one in 3000, you know, yeah. it kind of varies. So, yep. Yeah. No, I, I think it's a I think too. they're on par with like running an S9. Obviously yeah. more efficient I, I would, than an I, S9 I and you that. get more Terra hash or less Terra hash, but it's more efficient where you can run an S9 and you burn a lot of power. But I you're going to pay a lot. Par. Yeah. But I think you're on par with like the using earnings. it as a learning tool. Oh, yeah. You, um, yeah. Using it as a like learning an tool. I was, yeah. I think that makes sense. So switching gears away from uh, from the Bidax stuff. What are your thoughts on the? Because um, one of the things that really got me in three D printing was the was the pew pew. 
you know, for, yeah. for people who don't know what we're talking about, you know, like if you know, you know, if you don't too bad. Um, yep. but essentially what's your, you know, I mean, what's your take have, I I've printed a few, you know, I've printed a few frames and, um, I I've bought the pieces, right. I've yep. bought the pieces, but for some reason it just doesn't give me the confidence, like a real, like a real one. What are your, what are your thoughts? And I know I'm, I saying, I'm using the bad words. Real is bad because they're <laughs> yeah. real too. No, I'm sorry. They are real. Um, <laughs> the sorry. tech is awesome. Uh, I actually had a whole bunch that I had to destroy as soon as Colorado went full commie and banned it completely. Um, yeah, I had a whole bunch hanging on the wall, all the lowers. And I think it was like a lifetime sentence after having two for every lower you had. So it, it wasn't even risk Holy fucking with them anymore. So yeah, I destroyed like 30 lowers at, right. Like before that, that law got it passed. Oh my that God. was last so year, but I used to print a whole bunch. And my favorite was the Ubar two. Uh, it was an AR 15 lower uh, system. And I pumped like four at the end. I think I pumped 500 rounds through that lower without any cracks or anything. Really? Yep. Damn. Yep. I have to, I have to admit when I used hundred percent infill, I was really surprised That's at what how you sturdy they were. I, I, I was like, wow, this is uh you, you should never print a pew lower than hundred percent infill. It needs to be solid, completely yeah. solid. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. I, I wasn't aware that uh, that Colorado did that. So I, I don't understand. A year ago how, now. How, how can they enforce that exactly? It's essentially the thing is, right there, with it, right? Yes, yes. But when you have a family, you don't ever want to get caught with shit. No, no, no. Bullshit. Yeah. So and you don't want to screw Yeah, uh, they kids. can't really enforce it because it's all you, you print it at home and unserialized. But the thing is, if they knock on your door and they find your shit, well, you're fucked. Or if somebody reports you, right? Yeah, exactly. But there's plenty of states that don't have that law and you can print freely and it is glorious. And I highly suggest doing it because it's, it's they're freaking awesome. Do you think do you think that more states are going to are going to put laws to to prohibit this? And I, I mean, the federal government is even trying to push it. I think it's actually a federal law now. I can't remember. I know it's they're really starting to push it because 3D printing is so good now. And they started getting worried <laughs> that, oh, shit, these these are like legit cad drawings and files and people can print them and have a gun lower in like two hours now out of like carbon fiber and nylon and they look like an actual lower that's <laughs> metal and it's just nuts the tech and the whole like 3d printing industry on pews nuts absolutely crazy what these guys are doing i i have to say that i it was by far the most fascinating part of my 3d printing journey it, it, it is actually what kept me dealing with my inability to freaking print properly because oh, I, I was it, obsessed man. with being able to get these pieces to print <laughs> and yeah. i'm like i need to be able to do this as like a survival mechanism <laughs> i have to no, be able man, to build my was, own <laughs> it was such a fun hobby like i i really love that hobby and then they banned it because i was literally building a uh mac 10 that was called the big mac and it oh had i know a, yeah it was, it was so cool. sweet and then I had to get rid of it. And I was really pissed because I took a lot of time designing that. Like I was going to have like the little French fry aimer and the Big Mac foregrip. And it was sweet. McDonald's but... was going to sue you. It's okay. They it, Probably. They, they, yeah, yeah. You were going to get sued for that. Yeah, but it was, <laughs> was freaking sweet, man. It was. It was actually the sweetest thing. I I was like, damn it. I'm like, I would actually buy this. Right. Like that, that, right. You see? And that's why you'd get sued by McDonald's. <laughs> I know, man. It was so good. Actually, you know what? Um, speaking of making those things, yeah. um, one thing I really like that uh, that you printed up the guitar, the uh, the, the, yeah. the guitar frame, man. Um, what 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 inspires you to 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 do this type of stuff? Like, is it just like you're you're sitting there and all of a sudden you're like, I want to print this thing, I want to see this thing. Is that what happens? Yeah, that happens all the time, man. My my brain moves so fast. I. I have so many ideas that flow through. If I see something, I think I have like ADHD sometimes. And I'm like, oh shit, I got to do that right now. And that's what happened with the guitar. Cause somebody, it was a, the guy released it and it was like on printables. And I was like, holy shit, I just want one myself. And I was like, well, fuck it. I'm going to make it a Bitcoin one. And it turned out awesome. I'm like, there's gotta be people. Other people want these things too. Like there's no doubt. And anybody can go print their own. They don't even need to buy one from me. Like they, they can literally just print and build their own. But yeah, my mind, my mind's always racing. I'm always thinking of new shit. People are always tossing ideas towards me and it's, 
like sometimes I even forget about all the stuff that I want to do just because I have so many ideas running all the time. You have a portion of your website dedicated um, to uh, giving away essentially um, STL files, right? For people who don't know what that is, the the STL files are the the base file that a person yep. needs to uh, download and uh, essentially to be able to print a print, right? Yep. Um, so you offer these files uh, as part of your file factory. Um, what has been some community feedback on that? Um, do you, you know, do you get, do people actually donate to you for, for the files? Yeah, because like the minimum donation like, is one sat to download them. All. Yeah. I'm not, like, I see that all the time, which is no problem. I mean, it's out there. I just have it for fun. Um, and then every now and then you'll get like a donation of 10 to a, like 50,000 sats. And you're like, Jesus Christ. And then there's like a little um, note they'll put in and you're like, oh, that's super cool. Like, I love the file factory. You don't need to pay any more than one sat. But if you do, like, it's it's awesome. And it just straight goes to the Crypto Cloaks treasury. So are you aware of anybody taking those prints from the file factory and making them into know, their own at stuff? At this point, at this point, oh. it's like it happens. All I mean, welcome to 3D printing in general. I mean, <laughs> right? it's... that's it's like the glory of it. And also the I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. It's like the best part and the worst part about it. But then again, it's welcome to open source, basically. Uh, 3D printing is there for a reason because you can just 3D print anything ever. So if you make something, even if you don't release the file, somebody can just make it and print their own. Like, it, it doesn't matter. And I, every now and then I get pissed when I start seeing that shit. And then I have to, like, backtrack and be like, why does it really matter? I'll just, I can always just design more shit. And in the end, that's, that's kind of where I'm, like, my mentality is now. Like, if you want to rip it, rip it. I'll just make it and have V2. And if you want to rip that, good luck. I'll always be one step ahead. Like I, it doesn't even bother me. You can have the old shit, I guess. I'll always have a better version on the new ones. So like, that's, that's where I'm at now. You'll always make it better. Yeah. Oh. Cause that's the best part about 3d printing is like rapid prototyping. Right. As soon as I get feedback yes. from something like on the very first bid X case, I got feedback from something. And then like, as soon as I hit that feedback, I redesigned it that night and then started printing out all the new changes on every single order after that. So like that's that's the glory about doing 3D printed products. Like you you have rapid prototyping that you can change stuff and immediately send it out to the customer so they get the best version. I like that a lot too. And that that's something too that kind of got me thinking about the um and I talked about this with the Bitcoiner I haven't seen in a very long time, uh Max. Um, oh yeah. Max Galorski or something like that. Anyways, I God, seen... where is he? Right. He and I wrote to him like he totally disappeared, and did. I, I hope he's okay. Right. I, I hope he's totally okay. But Max like, is a good dude. Yeah, and like, um, he, you know, he was talking about this decentralization of the manufacturing process. Do you what What are your thoughts on? Yeah, like, he was doing crazy shit. Yeah, he was. He did it at a conference. And nobody knows who he is, and he, he writes. No man, <laughs> I. Never fucking forgot that guy. He was working on some crazy stuff where you could, it was like encryption. And then you, on like the, I don't know. It was, it was something crazy where you could try to hold the royalties on your files and distribute it without losing the files itself based on, I don't even, I don't even understand what he was building, but it was nuts when he was telling me about it. And yeah, I haven't heard from him in God, two, three years now. Like essentially, right? Like somebody would purchase a product from what I remember of this. Somebody yeah. would purchase a product, multiple printers, let's say from around the world or from the specific region, right? Wherever it would be easiest to ship from or ship to or whatever it is, well, probably yep. ship from. Um, and they would each print the parts, right? The Whatever part they were responsible for. And essentially- It was like, like a Bitcoin version of Shapeways. Yeah. 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 So- yeah. It is, it is crazy. Anyways, I hope he's good, but it, it really did get me thinking, you know, because you're, you're doing all of this 3D printing, like, are you seeing any evidence of this manufacture decentralization process? I feel like, I, mean, it, I feel like it's not there. Like, I feel like nobody's doing this. Nobody sees a benefit in this yet. I think I it's like there. Maybe too early. I think it's definitely there because even like companies like mine, you don't want to send out your STLs to everybody. Cause once you send your STL out, it's gone. Right. Oh yeah. Can take it. And, it's, and you're basing it on a trust and you're basing it on a trust model where he was trying to build it on. Don't trust verify. Yeah. And that was cool. Um, I think, 
I don't know. That's a that's a that's a really tough one. I don't see it. I don't know. I don't even know what my thoughts are on it, to be honest. It, it's it it's hasn't kinda, hit mainstream. No, it, it's a very like for me, this is like it's a it's a far off dystopian future idea. And I'm not saying that in the sense that it's a bad thing. I'm saying that I feel like that has its place in a specific type of society that we I don't know. We just don't have it. I yet. think I see it in the gun community more than anything or printing guns. Yeah, that. Uh, yes, I, I agree. Huge there. I think yes. it's definitely huge there. And I think as a necessity, old, probably. Yes, exactly. Uh, tyrant governments and shit like that. It's definitely yeah. a necessity there. I mean, the gun files, they're literally countries that are like arming their militias with these 3D printed gun files. And it's nuts to see. And then you see like the creators going, hey, that militia has my my lower. And they're like, holy shit. <laughs> like, that's insane. It's and you pretty see, wild. And you see people so, would sit there. Oh, sorry. Go oh, ahead. I know. No, no, no. It's pretty wild to see. But I think the decentralization you see is more on the aspect of like uh, you have the printables website. You have Thingiverse. You have all these different files where, or places or websites where you can download these files. So that's where the decentralization really is. I don't think it's more of a company thing. I think that's low on the totem pole. But overall in general, yeah, I think – since you can download millions and millions and millions of files anywhere around the world and 3D print it at the click of your fingertips, I mean, it, it's there just with these websites. So I think, yeah. So I think what you're describing there is, is that like there's different, there's different levels, right, of decentralization. And essentially right now what we're seeing is, is that that decentralization is occurring at the kind of the source level, right? Yeah. The source files, right? The source files will live on kind of thing but in terms of the manufacturing processes those are still i guess more yeah you just have shape ways and there's a couple other like ones but then in general they're just like a centralized unit that kind of decentralizes out to because what shape ways does is they're a they're a centralized place and then from there they automatically pick which printer in which region wow that's really cool i so there's a few places doing it it's just not that big it's the first iterations, right? It's the yeah. first, it, it always, you know, we're going to go back to this the Amazon thing, right? Amazon sold books, you know, like yeah. that was the first, that, that was the first iteration, you know, like, yeah, we've got books and everybody laughed at him. It's like, <laughs> look at him now, right? Like yeah. now it's like 25th iteration motherfuckers. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I mean, now it's we crazy. ship everywhere in the world and we have our own shippers and we have everything. Yeah, you they know? have all their own stuff. It's so it, it's crazy. It's crazy stuff. Oh man. Rick, um, before we wrap up, because uh, yep. we, we've gone all over the place, uh, but before we wrap up for the, uh, for to the... our normal interviews, man, we don't ever have one direction. No, which is great, <laughs> which is great. And no pun intended, right? For the, uh, what happened in the last two weeks there, the guy that passed away, it's, you know, our condolences, you know, the one direction guy. <laughs> I don't know. Oh yeah. The guy that got thrown <laughs> off the just balcony. A, it's just cause you said one direction. So, and I saw that oh, on the news and I'm <laughs> like, oh, what a weird correlation yeah that's this is what happens when your brain is garbage anyways um for the uh, for the listeners and the viewers how how do they find rick from crypto cloaks where can they reach you all the good stuff we're going to put this stuff in the show notes for everyone yeah uh crypto cloaks.com uh crypto cloaks on twitter instagram tiktok i don't run that shit i'm not on tiktok but Stuart does <laughs> let's see telegram crypto cloaks crypto cloaks everywhere crypto cloaks.com i think i already said that um, yeah, I mean, I have my own personal Twitter that I never really use, which is like Rick V 3d. Um, besides that, I just run the crypto cloaks account. Um, yeah, I don't, that's where you have a I telegram go. group. You have a telegram group too. Oh yeah. The 3d printing telegram group. You should definitely join that. I think I have a link somewhere. We'll I'll put, put it. Oh, don't worry. I'll find it. Right, I'll, I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. Guys, if, if you're, if you're interested in 3d printing and you just maybe, yeah, I'm going to ruin it for you, Rick. If you want, you know, maybe you want to have some basic questions that, that will piss everybody off in there. Um, you know, they're super happy to help. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going uh, to put a link in the show notes to that telegram group. Uh, it's a great group of guys, great group of Bitcoiners. Lots of good conversations there. Even though I never add anything myself, uh, I do pay attention to a lot of the conversation because, it, again, it's a lot of really great people you've got there. So Yeah. Uh, if you have any questions on 3D printing, do not hesitate to reach out to me. I will answer your questions because I think it's just as important 
for everyone to own Bitcoin, every Bitcoiner should own a 3D printer because it's self-sovereignty on a whole different level. And Rick shamed me again. And that does it for this episode of Pleb Underground. <laughs> All right, guys, don't forget to check us out on our audio only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. If you want to stream us sats, check us out on Fountain.fm. Guys, we will catch you next week. Peace. More toxic, more toxic than the most toxic Bitcoin Maxi ever.